Okay. So this is test number two with dual cameras running. I'm going to take a little ride around. Just ride around and chat for a few minutes and see if I've got these settings correct. Now yesterday, evidently, I had, in the, for the last week or so, sadly, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, I had my settings incorrect on my camera. And so all of my footage for the last trip, for the last two, two trips, has been ditched, <laughs> thrown out. Um, I just got rid of it because the quality was so bad on my forward-facing camera. So that looks like little hen, maybe. It is little hen. She's growing her feathers back. Okay, I want to get this lined up just so. That one looks relatively okay. It's going to be moving around a little bit, but I'm not sure what I can do to help that much. It may just be what I have to work with. Okay. Let's go ahead and get out here on the road. I'm going to try and adjust this just a little bit while this gate is opening. I think this might have worked better with the little tripod. So let's try this again. Let's reattach it. I've got a little tripod that goes under this camera. That might be better. So I've also got a piece of dark colored velvet up here on my dash to try and prevent some of the reflection that seems to be kind of inevitable off of the windshield. How about that? That might be okay. We'll try this and see. See how it goes. All right. I keep thinking I've got it just about where I want it. But I keep seeing other things to adjust. That's what this is. This is trial and error. So I'm making sure that the little hand is not on my main camera. Um, thank goodness my brother knows something about these cameras. He's had one for about three years. I've only had this one for about, I don't know, a month maybe. So. <laughs> he he warned me about this last night after he saw my last two videos that I posted up. He's like, I think your focus is on manual. And you can real easily accidentally turn that manual focus on because of the placement of the button on the camera if you're just reaching up on the dashboard and fussing around with it. So evidently that's what happened. I had turned it on a few days ago and didn't realize it at all and of course once you do that then your your videos are just you know for crap <laughs> because the, the um, resolution is screwed up okay I think that may have to come out I think that's better Okay, try it out and see here. So I'm just going to drive around and talk a little bit. So I've been watching a lot of, of videos on what to do and what not to do on YouTube. And, you know, honestly, I just do what I do. I mean, I drive around and I talk about what I talk about. And I have opinions, and sometimes I talk about my opinions, express my opinions. And, you know, other times I don't. Other times I talk about truck driving or 
you know, fashion, whatever, whatever topic comes into my head. A little bit of politics, maybe. I try to stay off the politics because it's such a polarized period in our history that everybody's got an opinion on it, but nobody wants to hear another person's opinion on it. They're not tolerant of it. They don't want to tolerate it. And I understand that because it, it pisses people off, you know, the way that it's been, the way that we've been intentionally polarized is really, has really pissed a lot of people off. And I'm kind of one of them, but I don't want to spend my whole life complaining about that, you know, so, so I'm, I'm trying to pretty much stay off that unless it just kind of naturally flows into the conversation somehow. So not really talking about that today, but talking about the things I do talk about. So, um, of course, one of the big things I talk about is what kind of trailer I'm picking up, where I'm taking it, you know, how it pulls, if I like it, if I like these brand of trailers, that kind of thing. I don't usually go into talking down the trailer brands I don't like so much because, you know, I'm not, I'm not buying these trailers. I haven't spent any money buying these trailers. They're entrusted to my care to deliver them is all. So I don't know that I really have, have the, um, what do I want to say, the standing to really be complaining about the ones that I don't like so much. But I, I do feel like if I tell you honestly the ones I do like, that'll give you an idea because I pull a lot of trailers. So my, my two favorite brands to pull, I'll just be real up front here. If I can hold my camera still, I've got to figure out a way to secure this one down if I'm going to do this. So I'm working out the bugs. This is how you figure out what you need to do. I think I can make that work. I just need to figure it out. Um, the two trailer brands I really do like are Cimarron and Big Tex. Of all the other trailers I haul, those are the two most outstanding um, brands of trailers. And others are, are just not quite as good for one reason or another in my mind. So they don't they don't rate as high on my on my scale of stuff to pull. So I'm turning on the highway 81 southbound. Just gonna run kind of through town, around town, and then make a loop back to the house and just see how this goes. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm coordinating my cameras. So when I do my editing, I have to line them up exactly so that the, the audio matches, <laughs> which is fun. A little tricky, but I'm, I'm figuring it out. But the reason I like the Cimarron trailers, as far as the horse trailers and stock trailers, they're aluminum trailers, I think, I'm pretty sure. They're not super heavy, and they're really nice. They're like the cream of the cream, cream of the crop trailers for, I, I would call it a mid, mid-range price-wise trailer. They're not as expensive as, say, a Bloomers or some of the, the more high-up brands, I guess, on the, you know. But I've never actually pulled a Bloomers because the ones that I've been set to pull were customized and too heavy for me to pull even with this truck. So I can't really speak to, to that to those kind of trailers, to the bloomers. No idea. But I really like the Cimarron's. They pull well. That one, last one I pulled, which was a couple days ago, actually had air ride built into it, so airbags. Man, you talk about a difference. That was the sweetest trailer I've ever pulled. I couldn't even feel, like I could feel my truck going across railroad tracks, but I couldn't even feel the trailer going across the railroad tracks. It absorbed all of the, the road shock. It was awesome. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was really enjoyable to pull that trailer. So if I was going to have a big trailer, if I was a person with like um, horses or if I was showing 
cattle or sheep or pigs or whatever and I needed a stock trailer and I needed a larger one, I would definitely splurge for the air shocks, for the air ride on that. Oh my gosh, it made so much difference. I had never pulled one like that before. And I'm in love with air ride. So for a lot of reasons, I, I really like the Cimarron's. I also like the Big Tex trailers. Big Tex is a, a solid brand. They've been around a long time. And their quality is just, um, it's, it's as good as you get for utility type trailers. For flat trailers, look at this bozo up here. annoying buddy you better get back over you hit my truck I'm going to have something to talk to you about <laughs> some of these wide load guys I mean I get he's trying to miss the trees obviously but they're actually supposed to function within their own lanes not go take over everybody else's lanes but big tex trailers, as far as utility trailers, flat trailers, hot shot trailers, um, dump trailers, tilt trailers, all of the construction related trailers, they just really, they rule. I mean, big tex just rules. They have the, the best quality. The components are bigger, beefier, and heavier than anything else I've seen out there on any other of the brands. So they're my number one pick for for the working class trailers and I think they do a great job. They've also got really good quality control and they have a they run a pretty tight ship you know that they have consistent quality which is kind of a, a big deal so Okay, so we just came through Marlowe, which, you know, this is, this, I'm going to put this up on, on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and post this to compare it to the one I posted last night, my, my first attempt at doing the double camera routine. So this is going to go up too, and then you can critique it, you know, for quality. That's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for camera quality as far as the quality of the video. The one I put up yesterday, the interior quality was okay. I guess the lighting was funky and I don't know what to do about that I don't know how to combat that because my lighting is sunlight and I'm not sure about the camera settings to to do I'm gonna have to look into that more but the one that was actually concerning me the most was my forward-facing camera up on the dash it's up here um, because my quality on it was grainy it was lower resolution than it should have been and it wasn't focusing on things well I think I've got that corrected by having it on autofocus now instead of manual. <laughs> Which I had no clue. Glad my brother caught that. He could tell by looking at the video exactly what I had done. And based on his own experience with his camera that's exactly like this one. My the big camera up here is like what he's got. Which is why I got that camera because his videos always look so great. You know, the, my smaller camera here, the one I've got facing me, it doesn't have as high of resolution possible as the, the other one. And I would tell you what these cameras are if I could remember. <laughs> uh, the smaller Sony ends with the 43, I think, and the bigger one ends with 100. And they're handy cams, so I'll I'll try and remember to post up the specifics on these cameras when I do this when I post up this test video, the second test video. Okay, we're getting down to the area of the Duncan Y, and I'm going to go ahead and turn left down here at the Duncan Y and get back on the country road. I'm I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit more, but I'm not as concerned about my camera mount for the dash cam for the this camera the little one here not that concerned about that today because I can figure out a way to do that I can put it on a, another little bean bag I think and just set it up there when I want to do this 
this is not something I'm going to do on every video anyway. This is something I'm going to do occasionally, you know. I can, then I can have face-to-face -face and have the road video going at the same time. But this is not going to be my standard deal unless everybody just loves it or something. And everybody says, yeah, you need to do that all the time. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. So a lot of this is going to be um, fed by comments that I get from you guys, you know, from all y'all watching. Guy's taking the whole damn intersection. Road hog. <laughs> Road hog. Okay. So I turn that down. Turn this up. Try and turn the air conditioning up and the radio down. This radio, I, I can't get it to stay off. When I start the truck, it starts the radio. It's really aggravating. It's an annoyance. I'm also experimenting with dash covers under the camera to fight the, the dash reflection that you're seeing right now. This is just a little county road, so I can just stop on the edge of it here. I don't have anybody behind me. I'm going to adjust this a little, hopefully. It's just flipping around. This is a piece of black velvet stuff velvety material just trying to keep it from reflecting on the dashboard that's a big issue with these cameras it's pretty much an annoyance it's a pesky situation I don't know if that's going to stay it's moving around so I'll have to when I get it fine-tuned to where I want it I'm going to have to stick it down somehow Okay, I got a car coming up behind me. I'm just gonna sit here and wait for him to go by. Don't worry, people. I'm not not broke down or nothing. <laughs> you don't have to stop. Okay, so I can see where I need to. I can see exactly what I need to do for the um, anti-reflection dash cover. I need to put down my velvet underneath and then also have a little bit over the leg of the camera mount. And then I need a like a sleeve or something to put on the little camera if I'm going to have it sitting up there. These are the things that I'm trying to figure out, you know. This is, this is exactly what this is all about. So I'm sure you can see this reflection all up in here on the windshield. You only get that when you're facing a certain way into your light source, but you never know when you're going to be facing that way when you're out running around like I do. So it needs to be something that will be like an all situation type of solution. I think I'll go back this way. I don't go this way very often. We'll change our direction and see how that affects our dashboard reflections. <laughs> okay. It's got actually a really, you know, now I've got the, the sun behind me. I've had it coming in from the right before, now it's behind me. So that kind of minimizes the dashboard reflections, I think, some. A little hard for me to tell looking at these view screens on these cameras. They're not very big. I mean, they're not as big as your cell phone picture would be. They're probably, what, inch and three quarters by maybe three and a half inches, somewhere thereabouts. Oh, it's just being a lazy day, guys. It's, it's Sunday. There's absolutely nothing going on. It's just, just one of those days. I'm hoping what I really need, if if I could get it, which you know odds are no, I won't probably ever. What I really need is I need a, a trailer going to Steamboat Springs or Craig or Rock Springs 
or Rollins or Grand Junction or someplace up in that region because I've got some stuff I need to load up and take up to my niece. This, we've kind of designated her to be the new official keeper of the family history stuff. <laughs> and I'm sure she is thrilled. But I've got a whole cedar chest full of stuff of my mom's and my dad's and my grandma's and my grandpa's and old family heirloom type stuff. And I really want to box it up and get it out of the cedar chest. It was my mom's cedar chest. And I brought it back with me after she passed away. I thought, well, you know, that's something I can use. And nobody else had claimed it, so I thought I'll, I'll just do that. But all this other stuff was in it, and then we put it all together because I was kind of the official keeper of the family history type person, and I'm just too far flung from everybody to be doing it anymore. And if I, if, like, if I died tomorrow, I don't know what would happen to all these family heirlooms. I'm sure Bill would do what he could do to get them back to the family, but you know, it's one of those things. I'd, I'd be happier knowing that that it was already, all this stuff is already back with the family and that it's off of my shoulders. That I stress out over it. I really do. And it's kind of stupid. Stressing out over a bunch of dead people's stuff. Isn't that dumb? <laughs> They'd be laughing at me. They'd be like, Sue, why are you being a dumbass? My dad would say that. My mom would be like, just give it to somebody. Just give it away. You know. So that's what I'm going to do. At some point, I'm going to box all that stuff up. And I'm going to keep the cedar chest because I kind of need it to store blankets in, which is what should be in it anyway. It shouldn't be full of all this family stuff. So I'm going to box all that family stuff up and get it ready. And then the first opportunity I get to go up in that area again, I'm going to put it all in the back seat of the truck and take it up there and deliver it and get it out of my out of my house and out of my hair and you know give myself a, a little bit of a break from it so I'm not sure what's going on with that that's a little weird huh it's weird got a little white spot appearing on my oh I see what it is it's sunlight okay I think maybe I don't know I have no idea, but I, I do need to get this sorted out and figure out where I want this camera to sit, because I'm thinking right about there is probably the optimal spot for it. I don't like it pointing so much toward this window because it messes up the lighting really bad. You know, the, the further I can get it away from that window, probably the better off it is. I'm taking notes on all this stuff. I'm trying to remember everything about what I'm noticing is I'm out here driving around. So, but anyway, this is this is me trying to figure out a better way to do my YouTube channel and to make it more, I don't know, just different, a little, little different from everybody else that I, I see out there doing stuff. I don't necessarily want to be, you know, just like all the other road videos or whatever. And I'm not. I mean, other people have a lot different way of doing them, obviously. Okay. Okay, I think this is probably going to work. I kind of like the way this looks. That's a little... That's a little too much stuff on the dash, really. I mean, I could technically probably get scolded by a cop if they wanted to be finicky about it. But it's not obstructing my view of the road, so, you know, it is a lot of stuff up here on the dash, but it's not like blocking anything. I can see, you know, clear across the front of my truck. I don't have any problems seeing everything out in front of it, so that I'm not too worried about. And I've been running with a camera on the dash for over a year and I've been inspected a couple times and nobody's ever said anything about it so <laughs> I think we're good on that point one of the few things I think I'm actually good on on inspections so I, 
I'm, I'm to the point now where I don't want to get inspected, you know. I'm nervous about it now. Feeling. I've had two inspections since I, I started back two years ago, and I got docked on both of them for this brake controller that's built into this Dodge. Um, so Bill basically killed that brake controller. We installed a separate unit. But the truck brake brain, the truck brain, so any of you guys with Dodges that are having this problem, you might want to pay attention to this little part. The truck brain was shutting off the brake controller because it thought that these big heavier trailers I'm, I'm pulling that have the, the higher um, voltage requirement for the brakes, I guess it didn't like that they were pulling that much voltage or something, so it would shut off the brake controller to protect something in the truck. I'm not sure what it was protecting, but that's what we figured. finally figured out was happening. The truck itself was shutting the brake controller off after I would use the brakes two or three times because I, I would be leaving a, a dealership and I'd check the brakes and they'd work. I'd get down the road 50 miles after stopping and starting and stopping and starting and then the brakes weren't working on the trailer. So it was the brain of the truck actually shutting that module down. For some reason it didn't like the amount of voltage it was pulling or whatever. So to, to get around that, um, Bill installed a Kurt Triflex independent brake controller that is not controlled by the truck brain at all. It's just, you know, it's a separate, separate entity. And I haven't had any trouble with trailer brakes since he did that. And, then, and I, I've got now, because I've, I've had two tickets for having, you know, no trailer brakes in the last two years so I'm constantly checking my trailer brakes as I go just to make sure they're still you know they're still stopping and this has been working so you know the next inspection I get I guess I'll have to give me a ticket for something else because hopefully that will be working but you know they they say you shouldn't be afraid to get your truck inspected but you know, if you get a ticket every time you get it inspected it's kind of like getting bitten by a dog every time you open a gate you just learn not to open that gate you go on past it you know what I mean so instead of going on routes where I know that they're doing heavy um, inspections and enforcement which is like interstate 35 and interstate 44 and other places around Oklahoma because Oklahoma is the only place I've been inspected um, other states don't seem to even care they, a lot of them don't even have way stations anymore but here in Oklahoma I've, I've just got to the point where I don't take those routes to begin with. I'm not dodging um, way stations, but I'm taking routes that don't have way stations on them just because I'm, I'm tired of getting tickets, you know. And it's not like I'm out here running, you know, I'm not running illegal or bootlegging or anything. And my equipment's in good shape. It was one issue with the brakes that has been resolved, but now I'm gun shy, you know. I've been been inspected twice and ticketed twice for to the tune of 250 bucks per ticket which you know that's painful for a small business so now I just when I when I don't have to run on those roads I don't run on those roads you know I I will get on interstate 35 if I absolutely have to to go through Fort Worth or something but I won't get on it in Oklahoma same thing with interstate 44 I won't run it south of Lawton anymore because they sit down there and they just wait and pull over one truck after another and you know I'm not gonna um, run from them or duck a scale like you know get off the interstate and go around where I think they're gonna do that but at the same time I'm not gonna volunteer to get extra inspections either if I know where they're at I'm gonna avoid them you know <laughs> I don't know I don't know how you're supposed to you know think about that even okay so this is, concludes my test and I appreciate any feedback on the quality uh, particularly the quality of the videos the sound quality everything like that because this is something I'm going to be incorporating into my into my usual routine in some fashion so anyway thanks for riding along and I will catch you in the next video the actual next video <laughs> thanks